Hmm. Conflict and strife are, are kind of synonyms. But the reason I like the word strife is that, yes, huh. it means discord and quarreling and fighting, but the root of the word is strive. Hmm. And so when I think huh. about when I'm in conflict or strife, that I am striving for something. Yeah, and it has a perspective. Strife, yes, it has oh, a telos great, yeah. to it. So, yes. And in the striving, the other strivings inside of me, the great striving horde, are competing <laughs> for resources. <laughs> you know, uh, the part of me that likes smoking, which might be the part of me that's striving for comfort. And somehow mm-hmm. smoking is comforting. Well, that's a striving. But there's another part of me that's striving to be healthier and to protect myself from future illness. And so these two strivings are looking at each other, mm-hmm. trying to figure out which, which striving is going to take the lead. Right. That is and that's, lovely. Yeah. And that's really Jung great. saying, it's the old story of the hammer and the anvil. Yeah. Of holding the tension, holding the polarities, of hammering it out between you and you, or me and me, of which striving is going to take precedence, the immediate gratification of smoking or future health benefits, longevity, et cetera. Which one? And by asking what is the striving, we also get a chance Mm -hmm. to drop a little bit below the outer seeming of it. So for instance, Uh Not to put you on the spot, Lisa, but in the idea of the third trial, child, to also ask, well, what, am, what, what is the striving? Is the striving yeah. to hold on to how beautiful it was to be pregnant, which I remember you telling me years ago, just how, how much you loved the experience of being pregnant and, and what that did to your psyche. I, I do. <laughs> I remember you saying that. I think that in retrospect. In retrospect, it may seem that. less so. Oh, goodness, I, I do. Uh, or, or the other fantasies uh, kind of around that. So in the conflict, to ask, let's say in mediation, for instance, this is a very common piece, mm-hmm. you know, I, I want the living room couches. No, I want the living room couches and the divorce. But is it really about the couches? <laughs> Is right, it really about exactly. who gets going to get the dog? Are, are we striving to punish the other person? Are we striving for power? Are we striving for any number of different things? And without, without the striving being revealed, we can spend so much time in the outer seeming of things. And I know, Deb, yes. you've said many times that the thing we're fighting about is not the thing. Mm-hmm. There's another thing. And right. this is where yes. it is such a psychoanalytic consideration because we waste so much energy fighting around these proxy issues. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's, exa- right. it's exhausting. Can I come in with the quote that you referenced a minute ago? Because it's such a good one. And you know, I love my quotes. Um, <laughs> so this is Jung. But since the unconscious factors act as determinants no less than the factors that regulate the life of society and are no less collective, I might just as well learn to distinguish between what I want and what the unconscious thrusts upon me as Mm. to see what my office demands of me and what I myself desire. As the at first, the only thing that is at all clear is the incompatibility of the demands coming from without and from within with the ego standing between them as between hammer and anvil. But Mm -hmm. over against this ego, tossed like a shuttlecock between outer and inner demands, there stands some scarcely definable arbiter, which I would on no account label with the deceptive name conscience, although taken in its best sense, the word fits that arbiter very aptly indeed. So, uh, you know, part of this is that what Jung is saying is that the ego is the one that has to figure out what's to do with the demands of the outer world and the inner world. And, and so, in a sense, the ego is always in conflict. 
Say more about that. Let's unpack that. Maybe there's some examples we could give. Yeah. Well, and I think, Joseph, back to what you were saying before I read the quote, you know, when you brought up the example of, of my pregnancy, kind of saying, like, what, what is the unconscious urge to do this? Mm-hmm. Where is that coming from? So that, you know, if something like, I mean, now I guess we'll just run with it. If, you know, it's like, do I want a third child? Well, there might be the, the, the impulse coming from within, and it might be uh, any number of things. It might be, I was a third child. I've always known I wanted three kids. It could be, mm-hmm. gosh, I loved having little ones. I, I want that to continue. It could be, you know, just a vague sense that the family doesn't feel complete it could be outer demands, you know, like uh, my family, you know, I come from a family where everyone has a lot of kids. And if I stop mm-hmm. at two, I'm going to be considered kind of an underachiever or, uh, you know, <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> you know, this is, but, but there could be building kind your of portfolio external. of babies. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but it, you know, but there could be outer things going on too, right? Uh, you know, maybe I don't know what I'm going to do when the kids all get old enough to go to back to school. Yep. And so this will kind of postpone that decision. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, it could be any number of things. So to be aware that the ego is standing in between in- inner forces and outer forces and is trying to be the arbiter mm-hmm. of right. those sometimes often competing demands. Mm-hmm. Uh, And Jung also says, you know, to let each side have its full say. Yes. Of of the part that wants another child and the part that maybe doesn't or what's going what's going on here. Sometimes I find it helpful to sort of uh, reconsider this as a negotiation. Mm -hmm. It turns the heat down a little bit. Of like, okay, you know, we're just negotiating. Uh, one part wants to go out for Chinese food and the other part, you know, wants to order in pizza. Well, that's not so heated. But can you take something that has more heat and turn it into a little bit of a negotiation? Because then it's easier to be curious about it rather than having a lot just intense feeling. Well, and I think that goes to Joseph's point. Joseph, I just love that, replacing the word conflict with strife. It's really great. Conflict mm-hmm. comes from the Latin for to strike together. So it really focuses ah. on the um, clash. <laughs> but right. strife, you're right, really focuses on the, the kind of the prospect of, you know, we're, we're, well, it legitimizes both sides, doesn't it? Yes, exactly. And then that becomes, Deb, what you're talking about. Can we be curious about the other side? Can we give each its yeah. due? It's just a negotiation. Now, you know, it is more than that, but it ha- it, all these ways are ways to approach it differently so that it's not like, oh my God, here we go, what a conflict, but just, huh, let's get interested here. Let's just go ahead and go toe-to-toe and, and hash it out between me and me or between me and you. 